This video explains one method of creating a PC Convey cross section. The video creating a cross section using the constructed waterway designer shows another method, and you can also import data from a text file or a spreadsheet. See PC Convey's help for information on that. PC Convey cross sections are made up of a number of points and segments. Each segment can have its own Manning's N or roughness value. Each point has an X and a Y value which can be negative. To start the process, select Create New Cross-Section from the Control Panel. This brings up the first data entry form. There are four data entry modes you can use to enter data, and you can switch between them while creating your cross-section, using whichever one suits you best. We'll start with Change Reduce Level Mode. In this mode, for each point, you enter the X and Y values described earlier, and the Manning's N value for the segment. The first segment must slope from top left to bottom right. A flat segment, or one sloping from bottom left to top right, would not contain the flow, so this is not allowed in PC Convey. In order to include these segments, you'd need to specify another segment to contain the flow. Similarly, the last segment must slope from bottom left to top right. For the situation shown on screen, there's no way of telling the capacity of the right-hand part of the cross-section. The flow must always be contained. For the same reason, PC Convey doesn't provide results for a water level above the lower of the first and last points. On the left hand side of this cross section, for water levels above the left hand point, the flow is not contained, so the capacity can't be calculated. To have the capacity calculated in that area, it would be necessary to add another point. And for this cross section, the maximum water level at which results would be available would then be governed by the right hand point. We'll start our cross-section at change 0. You can use the tab key to move to the next input box, and we'll enter a reduced level or elevation of 25 meters AHD for the left-hand point. Using the tab key again, we'll enter a change of 5 meters for the right-hand point, tab again, then an elevation of 24.9 meters. Right-clicking in the top half of the form brings up a table of roughness values, and selecting one of these enters it in the input box. Of course, you can just type the number in. Pressing the Enter key with the cursor in the Manning's N input box selects the Next Segment button. The right-hand point of Segment 1 becomes the left-hand point of Segment 2, so these values are shifted as shown. The first segment is drawn on screen using the full width and height available. The cross-section takes shape as more segments are added. If you make a mistake while entering data, you can use undo last as many times as you need to to back up through the data and then enter the correct values. We'll enter 8 as the next change and 24.65 meters for the RL. Pressing enter takes the cursor to the Manning's N input box. We want the same Manning's N value, so we just press enter again. The graph is updated and the form is set up for the next segment. We now want to add a vertical wall. We'll change modes to distance elevation change. The prompts change as we now enter a distance rather than a change, and an elevation change rather than an RL. The on-screen instructions change as well as a reminder of how to enter data in this mode. Enter a negative value for the RL to decrease, a positive value for the RL to increase, and zero for a flat segment. In PC Convey, the changes of the points must increase across the cross-section. You can't have more than one point with the same change. Therefore, we'll use an increase of 1mm to simulate the vertical wall. The wall is 2 metres high. As it's a concrete wall, we'll enter 0.013 for the roughness value and press Enter. The graph is updated to show the wall. The next segment is 2.5 metres and flat, so we enter 2.5 and 0. It's also concrete, so the roughness value remains the same. Pressing Enter twice accepts this roughness value and updates the graph. To demonstrate how the distance percent mode works, we'll change to that mode. The prompt changes to percent rise or fall, and the on-screen instructions change as a reminder of the format of this data. We enter the percentages negative to go down, positive to go up, and zero for a flat section. This segment is 10 metres long and falls at 2%, or 1 in 50. We'll use the same roughness value, so pressing enter twice shows the updated graph. To demonstrate how the distance grade mode works, we'll change to that mode. The prompt changes to grade equals 1 in, 
and the on-screen instructions change as a reminder of the format that this data needs to be in. We enter the grade as negative to go down, positive to go up, and zero for a flat section. Obviously a flat grade isn't really one in zero, but we use zero to get a flat segment. This segment is 10 metres long and rises at 1 in 50. We'll use the same roughness value, so once again pressing enter twice shows the updated graph. We'll add one more 2.5 metre flat segment with the same roughness. This button enables you to insert a previously created cross section into the one you're currently creating. We'll use the file Road Template Type 1, which can be found in the PC Convey Data Samples folder. PC Convey's help contains detailed information on creating and using templates. Once selected, the template is added with the changes and reduced levels relative to the last point entered. The Manning's end values are those of the template. This one has 0.05 for segments 8 and 13, and 0.013 for segments 9 to 12. If these aren't correct for your current cross section, they can of course be edited later. We'll now add another 2 metre high vertical wall, then another segment 3 metres long, rising by 0.25 of a metre, and a final segment 5 metres long, rising by 0.1 of a metre. As this is the last segment, we select cross section complete. This completes the graph and takes us to the next input form. On this form, we need to place the top of bank markers and specify the grade of the cross section. The top of bank markers specify the points where the relatively steep banks of the main channel meet the relatively flat overbank areas. Incorrect placement of the top of bank markers can lead to inaccurate results. PC Convey's help has more information on this, as does the video placing the top of bank markers. The top of bank markers are placed using these buttons. Sometimes it's difficult to see where the markers should be placed, and it can help to view the cross section at one to one scale. For this cross section, one to one scale shows clearly where the relatively steep main channel meets the relatively flat overbank areas, and the top of bank markers therefore need to be in these locations. The left top of bank marker needs to move across two points to the right, which is done using this button. Similarly, the right top of bank marker needs to move across two points to the left. This button provides some information on estimating the grade. We'll use a grade of 1 in 250, so we just select OK. On the next form, we enter the discharge information. The total design discharge goes here, and as some floodways have pipe flow beneath them, there are options to allow for standard or non-standard pipes. Selecting standard pipe brings up a number of options, which are explained in detail in PC Convey's help. The pipe discharge, if any, is subtracted from the total discharge to give the discharge that the cross section needs to carry. This form can also be accessed from the control panel by selecting the pipe flow calculator. You can view and print pipe grading tables as well as saving them to a file. In our example, there's no pipe. You can specify the type of event, but this is purely for inclusion in printouts. This doesn't calculate discharges for the various events. You can add an optional comment about the discharge information. Enter the project information. Again, the comment is optional, then save the file. On the printout, this is where the project comment appears. This is where the event type is printed, and this is the discharge comment. This completes the creation of the cross section. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a message below or contact us through our website. And thanks for watching.